rinnovo la cortesia ai prossimi relatori di, di stare nei cinque minuti, five minutes, because unfortunately we, are, we have not enough time. So, la parola adesso a Wilson Chaudhry dell'organizzazione United by Faith. Thank you. Glad to know my speech will be a little bit shorter. Um, I'm not going to go over the persecution in Pakistan. I think we've had enough of that, but I'm going to be reflecting on some of the issues, uh, no, on the bravery of Shabazz Bhatti, as we're here to honour him today. So I am deeply honoured to address you today, grappling with the task of encapsulating the profound impact of Shabazz Bhatti, a staunch advocate for human rights and a pioneer of reform in Pakistan whose life was tragically cut short by extremists, determined to per perpetuate the oppression of minorities. I had the privilege of meeting Mr. Bhatti on two occasions, in 2009 and 2010, during his visits to the UK as a guest of Christian Solidarity Worldwide. At that time, I was among the burgeoning number of UK NGOs committed to serving Pakistani Christians, galvanised by the international outcry following the harrowing events of August 2009. So we're talking about the attack on Gordra, where two churches, 100 homes, and the lives of a bride, a groom, and five members of a family were tragically lost. Sorry, I lost my the appalling act of violence, which resulted in the displacement of thousands of Christians, brought the issue of minority persecution in Pakistan into sharp focus. In my interactions with Shabazz Bhatti, I couldn't help but notice the dissonance between his public support for the Pakistani government and candid discussions behind closed doors. It was only through the release of a posthumous video following his brutal assassination that the full extent of the death threats he faced became apparent. I can scarcely fathom the immense pressure he endured, yet I commend his remarkable courage and statementship, which enabled him to effect enduring change in minority rights reflecting on Bhatti's unwavering presence in Gordra amid the chaos of extremist violence and his steadfast support for the beleaguered Christian community. I am reminded not only of his resolute demeanour, but also of his profound empathy. He personally comforted Christians in the aftermath of the riots, ensuring their safety and access to aid. Crucially, he also held local authorities to account, protecting the populace serving as a bulwark against persecution and discrimination targeting the Christian minority during a horrifying attack. This incident was the trigger for my efforts to help Pakistani Christians and his efforts were in part a justification for me to continue campaigning as he effected change even though it seemed impossible. As a leader of the charity that facilitated the liberation of Asya Bibi and ensured a re relocation to a country free from persecution, I had the privilege sorry I had the privilege of witnessing firsthand the profound impact of Shabazz Bhatti's charisma and unwavering dedication. Asi Bibi has spoken fondly of his personal charm and fervent commitment, which instilled confidence in her and her family during their most trying times. Although Asia and her family are not present with us today, they have conveyed their profound sorrow over his passing and their heartfelt gratitude for the outpouring of support shown in remembrance of this honourable martyr. Shabazz Bhatti's legacy stands as a beacon of hope and inspiration, compelling us to persist in the noble pursuit of justice and equality for all. However, Pakistan still bears significant responsibility for its human rights record, particularly concerning the draconian blasphemy laws that continue to devastate the lives of countless innocents, spanning across religious and ethnic lines. The fight for the repeal of these laws must not remain a paramount concern, must remain a paramount concern. Shockingly, despite efforts of address, such atrocities, the grim reality persists. According to the Movement of Solidarity and Peace, a Muslim NGO, an estimated 700 Christian girls and 300 Hindu girls abducted, raped and coerced into its first four Islamic marriages annually. This figure is believed to have increased in recent years, despite the enactment of new laws aimed at preventing such heinous crimes. 
Moreover, the plight of approximately one million Christian slaves tolling, toiling in the brick kilns and carpet weaving industries of Pakistan further. scores the urgent need for systemic change. While there are numerous other human rights issues plaguing the nation, time constraints prevent me from delving deeper into their complexities. The gravity of these injustices is, en is enough to send shivers down one's spine. Shabazz Bhatti's ultimate, ultimate sacrifice demands more than just lip service, so it calls for tangible pro progress. Therefore, I implore all of those present today to redouble their efforts in realizing Bhatti's vision of a just and equitable Pakistan. Only through concerted action can we honor his memory and bring about meaningful change. Thank you. Thank you.